I'm going to be demonstrating and talking about very etched products. Etching solution, it's a powder which we add hot water to to make the liquid, and also very etch etching cream, something that is painted on to do the decorative etching. Before we get started, a little bit about the setup. I'm going to be working on a piece of cardboard. I like cardboard because it's disposable. Also, if any water or acid gets on it, it's very obvious to see the wet spots. Now, I know that's water, so I won't bother with it, but I will treat any liquid as if it were an acid and protect my skin. We're going to use good gloves. Gloves that have a good resistance to the acid. I'm told by W.W. Granger that nitrile or butyl rubber would be the best. These are nitrile, pretty color too. Now, since I'm going to be using small containers, simple wrist size gloves are adequate. But if you're doing large pieces, if you're immersing in liquid, you may want longer size gauntlet type gloves. No, you definitely want longer gloves. And an apron to protect my clothes. If there were a spill and I were to get the acid on my clothes, they come off immediately. Hopefully not during this video. I don't want to embarrass myself. And lastly, protect your eyes. The beginning process with the very etch etching powder is to create the liquid. It comes in a sealed jar appropriate for the size container that the liquid is. There's sufficient crystals in there that when you add boiling water up to the shoulder, it will make approximately one quart. You're not adding one quart of liquid. We also sell it in the one gallon and five gallon size. I'm working within a container that when I'm pouring water in, I am messy. So I'm going to use this to contain any of that. The crystals in there are what will make the etching liquid. As you can see, my boiling water is up to about 185 degrees. I have made myself a simple funnel. I'm going to pour the boiling water in up to the top, or up to the shoulder. I know that everything on the outside is water. I'm dry that, cap it tightly, and shake. The crystals, as they dissolve, create what's called an endothermic reaction. I'm sure you remember that from high school chemistry. That means it gets cold. The energy of the boiling water is used to dissolve the crystals, and I'm no longer handling a bottle that feels like it's full of boiling water. Probably close to 80 degrees now. I'll drop my thermometer in, which has been coated with FlexTech, which is a urethane coating to help protect the glass, because I almost dissolved the whole glass the first time I did this process. But you can see the temperature dropping. So it is going to drop to about 80 degrees, and that's fine. The next step before you start any etching is preparing your rinse baths. Um, one pound of baking soda generic or Arm & Hammer. We do not sell this. Go to your local grocery store for it. But I put this in my water and approximately one pound of baking soda should neutralize one quart of the etching liquid. Give it a good stir. It's all right if it doesn't totally dissolve. It is in the liquid and that's where it needs to be. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is illustrate the etching of glass. This is a piece of quarter inch float glass. I'm going to give it a quick cleaning to make sure that there's no fingerprints on there because anything can affect the quality of the etch. Take the lid off and I'm going to immerse this in here for about four and a half minutes. You'll have to do some experimenting to learn exactly how much time does the etching that you want. My stopwatch and in it goes being about four and a half minutes, I'm going to stop my watch, take the glass out, allowing most of it to drip back in, Then it's going to go right into the bath with the baking soda to neutralize it. You can see the bubbles, that shows you that it's working. 
you should clean your glass. You want to wipe off all the glass that was etched away. It will be, remain in contact with your glass as a kind of a filmy scum. And if you touch it with your gloves, it will feel quite slippery. And then into a clear water rinse. You can see that it's nicely etched. I noticed a scratch on my glass before I etched it that did not go away. So you want to make sure your glass is just the way it should be, nice and clean, free of scratches, marks, dirt, whatever. Now this is a different kind of glass. This is a GNA. It's a clear stained glass. I have sandblast etched designs into one end, actually both ends. So I'm going to show you what it does to the surface of the glass. It will frost the glass just like you saw, but it will also frost and etch the sandblasted surface. It will not change the design, it will not polish it, it will not smooth it out. The texture from the sandblasting, which is rough, you'll be able to see the difference between that against the smooth glass that's being etched. Acid etching will fingerprint proof a sandblasted glass. If you sandblast your glass, you know how fingerprints are. This will eat away enough of the surface of the sandblasting to remove its interest in catching fingerprint oil. I'm going to start my stopwatch and go another four and a half minutes. We're winding down on four and a half minutes like I was doing before. I will stop that, take a second to bring this out slowly, dripping the acid back in the bath. Now I have a toothbrush that I'm going to use to clean the glass instead of the sponge. When it dries, you can still see the star with all the texture of the sandblasting, but the glass is nicely frosted. This is now effectively fingerprint proofed and it's not going to pick up any oils from my fingers. The last thing I'm going to show will be how design can be applied to the glass using a resist material. This is Buttercut, which just so happens that we sell. You can apply it to the glass, you can cut out your design, and I'm just going to put a little bit on both sides. You'll be able to see how well it may adhere to the glass. Again, we're going to see a four minute dip. So as this rolls down, I'm going to bring it out allowing the liquid to drip away and give it a good rinse. I'm going to get very close to the edge of the butter cut into the final rinse. Pull that off. Pull this one off. One more rinse in the clear water, just to make sure no acid remaining that may have seeped underneath the butter cut if I didn't dry it well. Now there's very nice edge retention. Glass is adequately frosted. And if this were a truly exciting design, I might sign it and try and sell it. I finished using this liquid. I'm going to cap it. This bottle is safe for storing it. Two things to note. One is never store it in another container, which may be confused as something you'd want to drink out of. The second thing is over time, the liquid will slowly turn darker and darker brown, looking almost like molasses. Sometimes when you start a batch, it'll be perfectly clear like water. Sometimes it'll begin with a little bit of an amber color. It will still work very adequately, even if it's as dark as night. Don't worry about it changing colors. Just worry about it not getting spilled or on your hands or in something you would drink out of. The same process, different format. We're going to decorate an empty wine bottle. If you have the idea of wanting to decorate bottles for somebody's wedding, the bottle doesn't have to be empty. And it's best to do this not right after you empty the bottle. Again, we use a 3M spray adhesive, just enough to make it stick so that it remains there while we're doing the design work.
some projects like this may be best dipped in a larger amount of liquid. Some would be fine with the painting of the very etched cream. Now having seen what we can do with the very etched liquid, now I'm going to demonstrate an option of decorating with the very etched cream. Very etched cream comes pre-mixed in the quart or one gallon container. The bottle is safe for containing it. The very etched cream is a light tan color. Over time, it will turn darker and it can turn very dark. This is a factor of the chemistry of the liquid or the cream and also time and light. Being satisfied with the stencil application to the glass, in this case a, a wine bottle, making sure it's pressed down so there will be no infiltration of the etching cream beneath the surface of it, I will prepare to paint on the very etch cream. What I'm going to do is paint it on as thick as reasonable. It's going to have to not run down the glass and I want it not to dry out over the four or four and a half minutes that it's going to be etching the glass. I'll be dipping in and painting it on, trying to go smoothly. We'll just see what we get. Start at one end of the bird. And put it on nice and thick. I don't want to just do one area and then come back later with more. That's why I'm not doing all over the place. I'm flowing with it. I don't really want it to start in one place and not continue. You know, the ed edges here, it'll be very light there. It may not etch as strongly. That's what I desire at, at the very edge. Making sure I have ad adequate coverage. And I'm just gonna let this sit for about four and a half minutes or so. Now, I had closed the bottle when it's not in use. The acid material where I did have it on very heavy did run a little. So if you're doing something that that would be an issue, you need to be careful of that. Since this is still liquid, I'm gonna show that you can save some of it. Now, because this is a solution that has the baking soda in it, any acid that goes into solution is not going to etch the rest of the bottle. I'm going to use a brush to get into all the crevices and get the acid off before I go into my next bath. Then as I remove the buttercut stencil, it's going to go right back into this bath just to make sure that there's no residual material on it. Having removed all the stencil, giving the bottle one last rinse, in the clear water. And when it's dry, you should be able to see a nice little bird and a tree. Here you can see where I went very lightly with the brush, just in a painterly way, as opposed to flooding the material, and you can get brush strokes. Here we have a nice little chickadee. Different glasses may etch at different rates. There may be glasses from one manufacturer or two manufacturers that you're blending in your artwork. A red glass may not etch the same way as a white or a black or a clear, or the black won't etch the same way as a clear. So if you have multiple colors in pieces that you want to etch, uh, some have found most satisfactory to give the whole piece a light sandblasting to develop the surface texture that they want and then acid etch it to develop the surface protection from fingerprint oils or the like. This is an illustration of the variable part of very etch. You can change the concentration of the acid bath and get different effects. What I'm gonna do is add 50% of acid and 50% of water. I'm going to add water first. Always add acid to water, never the other way around. Uh, and again, using the funnel, pouring in up to the line about 50% or to the one line of water. Now, having made our 50% solution, I'm going to open that up. I'm going to etch three different pieces of glass. This is a piece of single strength window glass. I'm going to place that in for four and a half minutes. At the same time, I'm going to put in a piece of quarter inch float plate glass, which is a quarter inch float, so one side of that glass has tin on it. I'm going to show you what happens with the tin as it affected by uh, the acid. I'm going to take out the small one that went in first. This is on window glass.
you can see the glass that is sloughed off. Now having rinsed them off and dried them, you can see that it does not pick up fingerprints, but it does have the effect of having removed a layer of glass off of it. Right here, you may be able to see the dip line, which is a slight demarcation where the glass is actually a little thinner on both sides because it ate the glass away. Now, for illustration of the float glass, you can see a hazy finish. Still have the same demarcation line. Because of the tin on this side, it's much less clear. The other side is fine. It ate away the glass, but it did not frost it. But it did affect the tin. This is GNA, which is a clear stained glass. Did the same thing, sandblasted the design and etched it. The GNA got frosted. You may learn that with different glasses, you may have to have different concentrations of the solution so you get the desired effect. All right, having seen what you can do with the very etch, uh, whether it's the liquid or the cream, here's an introduction to how we market it. We have it in the one quart size you saw me working with. We have the one gallon size, where if it's the crystals, you just add water to fill it up to the one gallon mark of the bucket, and the five gallon size. In maintenance of your solution, they can all be stored in the bottles that they come in. The cream, as you use it, if there's any liquid cream still remaining, you can squeegee that off and get it back in the bottle and still reuse it. Typically though, most of it is washed off and rinsed into the uh, baking soda to neutralize it, and then you can dispose of it normally. If and as the material is used, uh, it does slowly become less strong. If you have a five gallon container and you fi find it's not etching to your satisfaction anymore, it can be rejuvenated as a rule with a gallon of the very etched crystals. You want to add the crystals to the liquid of the five gallon. This material does not affect stainless steel. If your wife or you have a stainless steel pot that you're willing to sacrifice to the cause, take some of the liquid that is not strong enough, put it in the pot, get it up to a boil with excellent ventilation, add the next batch of crystals to that and dissolve it, and then pour it back into the solution. 